Hi up, well today my mission is to try and determine where the mud on this mill is coming from. Not sure if it's something to do with the table, um, where the head attaches to the column or if I need to shim the column. So I'm going to take a few measurements and have a look. Now I'm going to try and do this um, with a handheld camera, so it might be a bit wobbly. And move it down until we get north. Get to zero. on that. I'm getting the same results every time I do it. So that's minus three. Which is So I've got my nod in the head, which is basically listing forward like this. So I need to determine whether the table is lifted at this angle, or the column is not square to the table, or this section here is not square to the table. I've had, already had a few problems with this mill. I've had to um, remove the um, body filler that they've put in here, which is causing problems due to not being able to do the head up. So when you take a cut, the head would swivel. It's the same on this side as well. Um, I retighten the gibbs in here uh, quite a few times and tested, tested this test. I still have the same problem. It didn't affect, didn't seem to affect at all. Okay, so the plan of action is going to be um, place the square here and take measurement from the top to the bottom top using a micron in, two micron indicator and see if the head is being raised up and down on the column squarely to the table. And we'll test that now. I've set the gears to low and the bar is pushed this way into the gears so it cannot turn. So as the force on the needle is on here, it should not have any movement from the spindle, hopefully. <laughs> um, I've set up the two 
three blocks, two, one, two, three blocks, and I'm going to use a magnet, magnetic base, stop any movement this way. Yep, I think that should be good enough. Okay. I'm going to move the head down a touch to take the backlash out and reset zero. Okay. Move the head down to see if there's any um, movement. So I'd say that's about 52 microns. Do the same, but I'm going up. So move the head up, touch, reset to zero. And test it again. In theory, we should get 50 microns plus. Uh, minus, sorry. So from the top to the bottom, the measurement is minus 52 here. From measuring from the bottom to the top is 44, so that's a deviation of 8 in the measurements. Which, um, considering when you push on the head, you can actually move the head. Probably 30 now, 30 micron, sorry. So that 
is pretty good. So it's actually saying that the column is listing back, which is the opposite to the measurements. We tested the table from the spindle. This side the table is 0.3 up. So that's telling me that the problem is in here. So that may need scraping and bringing back like this. Or this bit, not sure yet. Whichever's easiest. Um, just out of interest, I'm going to do the same measurements, but to see if we have any list like this in the column. Or, and at the same time, you can also check how square this square is. So I'm going to flip the square to this direction and then that direction. Uh, same proce process again, I'm going to ensure this is square. By measuring the face. Not again. Cool. Well, I'm going to flip it around and test it again. Same again, squared it off, front and back. That tells me that the square is listing it in. In that plane, the column is very square, down to two or three microns. Um, I'm going to test that direction. So I think I've got yeah, I think I'm an idiot. I think I've read this backwards when I was taking the measurements on this axis. I'm just going to double check. This should um, 
increase as we go down and decrease. deviation of the square is 50 microns so that's what we're reading there so 50 microns from top to bottom about top to here so that would indicate to me that that column is pretty square to the table uh, I'm going to do the same test <coughs> as before but um Testing the spindle, how true the spindle is running down. As you can see, that's gone around the clock only at half the distance. So, this would indicate that the spindle is going down and back, which sort of confirms that the head is <coughs> tilted. Be 240 microns, which in an earlier video I um, scraped. This is the part I scraped in here. So I scraped um, this face and this face um, without doing any measurements beforehand. And considering what I did, I think I was quite lucky. That could have gone very wrong. Yeah. Might be able to see the face. Considering I've never done any scraping and no measurements, I didn't mess it up too much. When I first got this machine, I started the uh, running in of the gears. So you'd start it on low speed and low, run it for 15 minutes, change the direction, run it for 15 minutes, put it into two, do the same. Did that, and then went from two to three, try and do it and I couldn't move the spindle, it was so stiff, I couldn't move it. So there's like, it was crunchy. So I took the top cap off up here and discovered there was swarf from the factory which had got into these top bearings, gone down to here into the spindle ball, into the top spindle bearings, through the, carried on through the spindle housing and also uh, ended up in the lower spindle bearings. So before even using the mill, I had to strip the um, spindle out, clean it out, put it back together. Um, 
the people who I bought it off uh, will be sending new bearings as well as oil seals between the drive of this and the gearbox so at some point when I have the time I'm going to have to remove the head remove the spindle remove the head do the oil seals replace the bearings in the spindle and now it looks like I'm going to have to work out how I'm going to attack the nod, the nod in the head. Not sure whether to um, scrape this surface on here. So the surface, the, the surface between these two, which would mean having to redo the dovetails, which. Um, I have never done before. Considering the only thing I've scraped is this. <laughs> or I try to do this surface in here. So somehow I've got to work out how much I need to scrape to bring the head back out into squareness. I'm not sure how to do that. Not sure if it'd be trial and error or not sure. Anyway, right. <clears throat> that's where I'm at with this at the moment. And then hopefully, once I've done that, I can uh, get back on to sorting this machine out. So with this one on the opposing side, I've replaced one of these made the bushing um, these seem free this one here is also pretty seized and that one seems free I've not taken these off yet find out what the problem is or if there is any problem whether I need to replace them and this is one I have did in the previous video where it fixes onto the machine. Um, I've remade this using a EN19. Because the previous ones, I just did not think the metal was up to it and I'm still not sure if the EN19 is going to be strong enough. Yep, so this is one of the original pins, which I assume is case hardened. Okay. That's um, 14, 14, 16. Still doesn't touch the out, outside where it's worn by the So this, this stuff is definitely case hardened. Not sure what it is. Um, these are the first ones I made from shaft material. I have no idea what it is. That's below 40. This is the N19, unhardened, just as it is. That also bites. <clears throat> now this is EN19 of test hardened. Uh, what 40? Doesn't bite. 45 doesn't bite. 15. Very maybe. I'd say bite, so somewhere between 55, 50 and 55. That's when 
the M19 has been hardened. I think that's going to be the way forward for these. So probably have to remake this again and make another one like this and try hardening well, hardening them to about 55. so far. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you again.